There's never a shortage of dumb people doing really stupid things. Welcome to another edition of Idiotology with Lynch and Taco. 1011 WJRR. Bunch of freaking idiots. All right, don't forget we've got another JRR sticker stop happening this morning. Uh, Deltona Young Gamble coming your way. He'll be there at 7 when Dixie parking lot on uh, Howland Boulevard. 7 o'clock. First 20 people to stick it and win are going to score a JRR t shirt. And that sticker, obviously, and you're still in the running for the big prize. Because um, yeah. don't forget, when you put these JRR stickers on your car, you're in the running for a big prize, which is good. It's usually trips somewhere, stuff like that. So, 7 to about 8.15 this morning, when dixie on Howland and De- Deltona. Young Gamble will be there. And you don't have to be in the first 20. and first 20, you're getting an extra spiff, but he'll be there with goodies for yeah. everybody who comes by. All right, I know it's only 5.36 in the morning, and I don't mean to hurt your brains with this, but try to wrap your head around what I'm about to read to you. I think we can all do it. Let's try together. Identical twins who married identical twins say their sons are genetically brothers and cousins. Okay, yeah, you lost me. Got the brothers and cousins part. Oh, I see why. Identical twins can be impossible to tell apart. Tell apart. Um, the boys are just three months apart in age. Are called qu- quaternary, quaternary twins, which means that while the babies are technically cousins, they're also genetically brothers. The one-year-olds share the same DNA, which means they are genetically brothers, and the family is just one of three hundred quaternary families in the entire world. This is. Uh, identical twins Brianna and Brittany from Virginia, and twins Josh, Josh and Jeremy, Jeremy, uh, who are the parents of Jax and Jet. Okay, so cousins and brothers. Run this by again. It's identical guys that that married identical girls and then had identical twins. No, they Wait. just had sons. Uh, but so if the aren't. They're pretty hot. <laughs> I'd marry her too. I was just gonna say it's if it's identical. Okay, identical boys, right? The the original ones, the identical boys married identical sisters. That's weird because they would have already been kind of sister in law, brother in law. It makes your head hurt, dude. Yeah, it does. I know Virginia's in there, and some would say that's a that's an outlet. But, but look, I mean, these aren't. They're they're not like. And they're not muta- inbred. Mutations going on here. They're your smoking hot. <laughs> in family loving going on there. <laughs> it's <an> Appalachian situation. <laughs> you know, hey, Ozarks. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> the, wow, that was heavy for the mor- The first story of the morning, too. Yeah, I just I figured I'd get it out there and get, really try to jumpstart your brains this morning. So you're welcome. Somebody said, Taka, your brain's going to explode if you think too hard. It almost just did. I felt a little rupture. Magic mushrooms may be the answer to uh, getting heavy drinkers to quit drinking. Oh, just get them hooked on another drug. (laughs) Psilocybin, um, I guess they've been kind of tinkering with as it relates to alcoholism. They say more research is needed to see if the effect lasts and whether it works in uh, a larger study. But uh, this study they just completed shows that psychedelic mushrooms have indeed been able to help heavy drinkers cut back or quit entirely. Um, well, that's a, that's a good thing, but they said they still have to do more research. So if the research doesn't pan out perfectly, you're going to have a bunch of raging alcoholics stripping on shrooms. Yeah, pretty much. I just have to. I've never done psychedelics. Yeah. Do Do you still have an urge to drink when you're on psychedelics? Do you know what I'm saying? In high school, when all my friends, you know, like I went shrooming with them, I just didn't really eat them. But when when they were all tripping on mushrooms or or stuff like that, do you go? Let's go get some beer. We had beer anyway because you were in high school. Well, yeah. You know, it was like... They go hand in hand. What else were you going to do? Right. (laughs) You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. I mean, if you're... 
if psychedelics are your thing, do you still then want to layer on some alcohol? If you're not an alcoholic, I'm just saying, is there? Does it's that? Just, it's just not even alcoholic. If they like to party, if they like to, have, you know, toss a couple back, possibly. Then, but I have high school. I have That's, high school knowledge. That's it. I have no oh, knowledge uh, on this personally, yeah. so I just I don't. I, I haven't. I I didn't need them, but you know, I was there every time people did. Hell, I remember the story I told you where. We uh we were at Twitch's house, a buddy of mine from high school, and the guy was from I think Virginia. As a matter of fact, it was our friend's cousin was there, and everybody was tripping on mushrooms, and they were up on the roof, and the cops came, and uh the guy got a running head start and dove into the tree to escape, <laughs> and he was missing for like three days, <laughs> wandering around Maitland. I don't know how you'd go missing in Maitland, wandering around Maitland missing, tripping on mushrooms. <laughs> That was the one where Pinball Pete, 20 pounds of swinging meat, told the officer 1-800-EAT-MY. God. Yeah. When he asked for his number, because it was, wow, that was a long night. (laughs) Especially if you weren't tripping like I wasn't. I was like, whoa. I was reading this interview with Ozzy. He said he quit quit psychedelics after he had an hour-long conversation with a horse. Yeah, that I might do it to you, Oz. Or or running, get a running head start and jumping into a tree as your barrier to hold you and scale your way down and and show up three days later. Yeah, that's where the cops they came in and uh and Pinball Pete, he was the only eighteen year old there. So they're like, We're calling your parents and he goes, You can't call my parents, I'm eighteen now and they go, Give us your phone number, dummy. <laughs> He is one eight hundred. Eat my a hole. Yeah, that's like that's, that's gonna go good. over real well, Pete. He, he got in a fight with three cops at once. Yeah, we had to explain the scuff marks to the parents. Mm. It was a long night. It happened again. This is supposed to be the biggest one. You're saying? I say this could very well be the most horrific on the job um, death we've ever talked about now granted the original the og it happened again going through a, a wood chipper a wood chipper is it's terrible I, it doesn't get much worse than that but at least it's pretty quick that's what somebody said it's quick wood chipper um you ask people are answering when shrooming you can drink but it has no effect on you just a waste of alcohol and money okay well there uh, okay that's one part of the question you do but not crave alcohol is the next person's text that that was my question yeah it says no when tripping you do not crave or even want alcohol so well maybe there's some real legitimacy to this as a <laughs> could, offset one for another but could be but i mean you're still out there <laughs> when you're yeah. wow all right, let's go to Thailand for it happened again. Okay. Uh, a rubber wood plantation. This person, anytime they tripped on shrooms, just wanted to smoke weed. <laughs> Didn't want anything <laughs> synthetic. <laughs> okay. uh, wow. We got them up this morning, Pat. You wrapped their brains around it. All right. All right. Uh, Thailand, rubber wood plantation, uh, an elephant handler who uh, was having an elephant move uh, some stacks of rubber wood around the plantation, is no longer with us. Did he drop the rubber woods on him? No. Hottest time of the year, I guess the elephant became agitated, said, I had enough of this moving crap around for you. Uh Uh-huh. Stabbed its handler with its tusks, and then proceeded to shake back and forth, ripping the handler in half. It was forklift. He forklift him. Basically, look, Mitch... (laughs) Right, right through the torso, shakes head back and forth with the tusks inserted into the handler's torso, effectively sawing the guy in half. Oh my god! I think that might be, and it is his job. So because with it happened again, it has to be on the job. It, so I it, think I think you might have hit it out of the park here. Both halves of the handler were picked up and carried off. Elephant's name was Pom Pam. You know what? I'm not. I'm not retrieving. My co-worker's body. That's where I'm just saying, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm so glad we just kind of eased into things this morning. Yeah, that was heavy duty, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm on mushrooms and beer. Here. 
support the Lynch and Taco Show weekday mornings on Facebook Live. Just give us a like at 1011 WJRR.